Gotham Knights has quite a bit going for itself. There's quite a lot of mechanics to keep in mind, ways to approach each challenge, and things you might end up not paying too much attention to, but you probably should as they become a lot more important as you progress through the game. I already finished the main story and most of the side content, so here's a list of the biggest tips and tricks I think everyone should probably know before jumping in. As always, a thumbs up on this video would be awesome, and let's begin with the first tip on the list, and that's going to be mastering perfect evades and perfect attacks. This is the first thing that you'll want to nail down early on and make use of throughout the entire duration of your time in Gotham Knights. When an enemy attacks you, pay close attention to their hands or their weapons. As soon as you see a white circle becoming jagged with those menacing edges, that's when you'll want to press the dodge button to perform a perfect dodge. As soon as you've done that, the next step is to immediately follow up with a light attack, which is going to let you perform a counter attack to deal much higher damage and send enemies flying. On top of this, your dodge is also your main animation cancel. It lets you pretty much skip the animation of anything, including even in the middle of combo chains. The animation cancel is also pretty much instantaneous, so you can go ham in at a target without restraint, knowing that you can just dodge at any point if you keep an eye out for their attacks. Plus, animation cancelling also works during traversal, like for example to interrupt a grappling hook line or to readjust during mid-air. At number 2, another habit I also recommend forming as early as possible is for the timed strikes mechanic. These deal way more damage than your regular attacks, have quicker speed and build your momentum that much faster. So do not rush to bottom spam your attacks against targets, instead just time your strikes by pressing your attack button just as your previous attack is about to hit the enemy. Think of this as waiting just under one second between each button press, and if you pull it off successfully, you're going to notice your weapon starting to glow, it's going to get a new effect, also some sound over there playing in the background, and you will know it's happening because your character will start unleashing these attacks with increasingly higher speed and more damage. You can also test this in the training room back at the Belfry, by the way. I highly encourage you to actually do all of the challenges over there as it does teach you about all of these things that I'm telling you for the combat. And honestly, these are also very useful against some of the brute enemies. Sometimes they might be a bit too tanky for you until you get some of the proper builds in the end game that lets you meld them. Until then, this is a great way to time your strikes and deal the optimal damage. At number 3, I think this goes without saying, but you should probably scan everything, especially during main missions, and even more so to look around for some of these purple treasure chests. Every single mission I've done, and many of the open world events too, will have at least one, if not multiple, of these treasure chests containing gear, crafting mats, and oftentimes also blueprints for that character. It's usually easy to reach them too, like just climbing up an extra set of stairs, or going through a hidden vent, or just like going over a side path that doesn't take too long to discover but it does give you all of these items it's gonna be worth it especially if you keep doing it as you progress through the game since it's gonna give you all of these resources that you will definitely burn throughout as you go more and more into the end game and want some of the higher end stuff but moving on to number 4, Gotham Knights really lets you fill those detective shoes by letting you interrogate informants and discover crime throughout the city. There's two types of criminal events happening, one called opportunistic crime, which is marked by white triangles, and then there's also the premeditated crime scenes shown with a distinctive red one. The red ones are the most important, as they are needed for most challenges, unlocking abilities for your characters, and providing tons of loot. The basic play is that you'll want to interrogate or defeat criminals from the white events to reveal the location of the red ones. So let's talk about the first way of finding these red events, which is through interrogating informants. The next time you find yourself at an opportunistic crime spot, which is as I've said, indicated by a white triangle, go ahead and start scanning your enemies and pay close attention to any of them that might end up showing a question mark over their head. Because you'll want to keep these for last and make sure you only drop them just below half HP. This in turn will let you grab them and now you're going to notice a new option popping up at the bottom to interrogate them. Every informant you interrogate will oftentimes reveal a new premeditated crime scene indicated by the red icon 
that's about to happen in Gotham. The second way of doing this is through collecting clues, which are these red icons that drop from defeating enemies. The more you collect, the more of these premeditated events you're gonna be able to uncover, but first they get stored into your character screen right here, either on the right side or on the map. And with these, you have to get back at the Belfry, which in turn is going to make the game to store them, which is also going to reveal the premeditated events in the following night once you go back in the city. That, or you can also randomly stumble upon these while exploring the open world, but that can be quite unreliable. Now, moving on to number 5, let's talk about mods and why you should use these ASAP, especially with gear starting at around level 10 and 13, that finally get at least one of those mod slots, because these will elevate your gameplay to the next level and make it possible for you to clear out entire gangs of enemies like never before. I highly recommend using shock damage for the burst and the additional AoE, but Frost is also awesome at incapacitating enemies and also debuffing their defenses in case you're having any trouble with them. So this is the screen that you're going to want to pay close attention to the mod screen, which is going to let you both slot, but also promote slash upgrade your existing mods. I highly encourage you to use for the melee and the ranged weapons mods that increase the chances for your elemental status effect to be applied, but that's just my preference. In this case, you will also want to promote them to increase their stats, make them better and just evolve them. If you have lots of the same quality, like whites and greens, just combine four of the same quality and you'll guarantee get the next level above it. For example, four whites turn into one green, four green into one blue, and four blues into one epic. Level here doesn't really matter as long as they are of the same quality. You can just combine low level with high level and get the resulting upgrade with the highest possible level. We can also see exactly all of this information you need in the preview window that pops up when you've selected four mods for combining. I also don't recommend mixing and matching different rarities. You're just going to get a resulting mod with a rarity of the one highest in the mix. So if you combine like one or two blue with um, two green or two white, you're just going to get a blue one and it's not really worth to waste them. Coming up to number 6, completing bonus objectives should be one of your main priorities and the game doesn't stress this enough, but every time you do a main mission, side mission or open world activity, always pay close attention to the top left corner of the screen and any bonus objective you might see over there because these are a great provider of bonus XP, materials, more loot and more blueprints. These will exponentially become way crazier and way better as you progress through the game, level up and get some of the higher end missions, but it's totally worth doing from the very beginning. Very early on, it doesn't even involve doing much, just like taking down enemies in certain ways, going in stealthy or using certain types of attacks. So stuff that you do anyway, why not pay attention to it, get the extra rewards and the extra benefits, otherwise just risk losing and not getting anything at all. This brings us to number 7, use stealth as often as possible. While the stealth in Gotham Knights is quite simplistic and the AI quite literally comically basic, it can present a few unparalleled advantages. Taking down half or even an entire group of enemies with silent takedowns is one of them and this can help a ton when you might not have the tools at hand yet to deal with a large group of enemies. Characters like Robin can go a step above and use silent takedowns on large brutes with one of his early skills, which is much faster than fighting them one on one in the normal way. But by far my favorites are using the environmental hazards for some really creative team wipes. For example, you can shoot at a random spot to cause enemies come in and investigate, like conveniently right next to one of their explosive barrels or mines, which you can then detonate to wipe the entire team. That or you can also lure singular enemies when facing large groups and then pick them off one by one behind the line of sight of their friends. Nightwing also has the unique advantage of attaching explosives on electrical panels which can attract unsuspecting enemies to discharge additional damage once they get close. Another useful stealth tip for you is the fact that you can actually use smoke bombs with any character to disengage from your current fight. You simply have to hold down instead of tapping the grapple button which leaves off a trail of smoke as you ascend upwards, taking you back into the shadows and leaving your enemies just as confused. 
so you can later jump back in and approach them from different angles or deal with them in other creative ways. Moving on to number 8, a quick tip is to always consult the challenge menu when you feel lost. This is your main guide of your time in Gotham. This is going to show you everything from the case files, aka the main and the story missions, contact missions that you've unlocked for extra rewards, Gotham's most wanted criminals, even the ones that you need to unlock knighthood and momentum abilities. All of them are here and a lot more and you can always come back to consult this for what you should do next. So whenever you're missing a certain ability and want to unlock it or maybe want more loot or just want to take part in a certain mission with certain characters but don't really know the level of them yet, you can just consult this menu and have all of this info neatly right here. Now moving on to number 9, looking good is just as important as dealing a lot of damage and you're going to want to unlock a lot of the suits which in turn is also going to unlock their transmogs. So the usual way of doing this is by first finding the blueprint for the suit which is done randomly through just progressing through the game, doing main story missions, side activities and especially some of those premeditated crime scenes I was talking about and once you get them pay close attention to the crafting challenges. They will provide you additional new transmogs as well as additional XP if you complete them. For example, in this case, one of the challenges has me to um, get the metal transmog, but I do not have that yet. What I do have is the blueprint to craft a suit that does have that skin. So if I craft it, this lets me unlock both a new suit, but also its transmog that I can then transfer to a different suit that I might get later on. One thing to note about these transmogs is that they cannot be customized, only the base version of the suit can be in terms of the cowl, hands, feet and the colorways. Not sure if it's an oversight, but that's how it works right now. And finally to number 10, switch between knights as often as you can. They all bring something amazing to the table, can become amazingly strong with the right builds and it helps you keep your gameplay fresh. The XP and levels you get is shared so when you go back to a different character you won't have to refarm to get their skills and their XP as it's all going to be there. You might even find out you have a lot of higher level gear already on them by simply having played with some of the other characters so jumping right into the fight with a new character is faster. Eventually you will want to unlock that much better crafting blueprint for maybe the next suit in the line or maybe the next weapon but I'm gonna talk about that in a different video. In the meantime I also encourage you to check their character missions as each knight has at least a few of these that pop up randomly in the belfry and in the open world as you progress in the story. Oftentimes they provide a nice cutscene with more context about their backstories but also get XP, loots and colorway unlocks for your suit styles. This is it with the video, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.